Nigel Farage, politician, Brexiteur, and has built his career on controversial statements and divisive rhetoric. One of the reasons the Southport riots were as bad as they were is we weren't told the truth. In this video, we'll dissect his latest car crash of an interview where he doubles down on inflammatory conspiracy theories. Now you're a the member fact, of parliament. Do, do, do you know what? Responsibility now. You can't just behave like some Neither of pundit. You do. And uses misleading tactics to stir fear. You can't just put false information out into the public Ex knowing exactly. what Exactly. Almost akin to something out of Lord of the Rings and Wormtongue, and also reminiscent and echoing of Enoch Powell. Thankfully, Susanna Reid was on hand to deal with him, but the way he talked to her, well, we'll talk about that later. First, we're gonna go back 10 years, because I want you to listen to this quote read to Nigel by a journalist and note that Nigel agrees to it, but also note he's going to say the same thing throughout all of this interview. Uh, about the impact of immigration on the existing population, for reasons which they could not comprehend, the indigenous population found themselves made strangers in their own country, their wives unable to obtain hospital beds in childbirth, their children unable to obtain school places, their homes and neighbourhoods changed beyond recognition. I mean, you'd agree with that, would you? I, in a lot of England, that's true. And you know where that's from, don't you? I don't know. Enoch Powell's Rivers of Blood speech. Is it? So-called well, Rivers of Blood. Well, Enoch Powell, hero to the skinheads and the far right. Yes, Nigel is repeating his rhetoric in his famous Rivers of Blood speech. And it's not going to end there because Nigel is also going to attack immigrants despite this. He warned about Europeans taking British jobs. Your wife is German. She's yes. your secretary. Yes. She's paid for by the British taxpayer. The man who tax immigrants also has a wife who's German and is now dating a French lady. And it just reminds me of that Frankie Boyle joke. I think British people just get immigrants to do the jobs that they can't face doing themselves, which is why Nigel Farage has a German wife. Without any further delay, here's Nigel's first conspiracy. Here's the point. Most people that come into the country come on relatively low wages, pay very small amounts of tax, and overall are not benefiting the country financially. You'd think after all the riots he would stop all the lies, but no, he has to continue, doesn't he? Statistics have shown that actually migrants to the UK since 2000 have contributed billions to the economy. In fact, on average, about three billion a year. They're not a hindrance, they're not a burden. They are actually adding to the economy. And these words are the words that were echoed by Enoch Powell, that migration is just detrimental to Britain. In fact, statements like this hacked me off so much I wrote my own report, The Road Back to Europe, Fixing Britain's Economic Decline and Population Crisis. The report Tories and Reform don't want you to read. And I wrote this because the Tory candidate leader, Robert Jenrick, also had a car crash interview, but also seems to be mirroring very similar lines of argument that Enoch Powell said seems that the Conservatives and Reform Party are the Enoch Powell Party. They want to blame migrants even though all statistics and data seems to show that these people add to the economy. And instead they want to ignore facts like austerity causing damage to the economy. And people should really be anchoring the fact that there's very little social mobility in the UK, especially compared to other major economies. Or that the UK needs 400,000 people a year just to make up for the fact that we've got a low birth rate. Or that the UK is suffering from a staggering brain drain that's damaging the economy, with 500 to 600,000 people a year leaving for the last three years. And he continues with his conspiracies. Sorry, why? Uh, for the you last can't seven, blame them if they're on low wages for paying small amounts of tax. No, They'll but, pay but, tax in, in yeah, relation to so their how wages. How do we pay for more GPs? How do we pay for more roads? How do we pay for all the things that we need? Do you want to increase tax on those who come here from overseas? A, no, here is a fact. Do you want to increase faster, tax for those on low wages? Hang on. The faster the population grows, the more we see a fall in living standards. As I stated in my report, it's quite clear that they're adding about three billion a year to the economy and they're not taking away, they're adding to the economy. Most are over the age of 18, so you've not actually had to provide any schooling or hospital care for these people. But again, Wormtongue has to get his words of poison out in order to try and convince people to support his party. We have seen average wealth for the individual fall as the population's exploded. This isn't working. Similar words to Enoch Powell, and just bear in mind, what he's really saying is, don't blame me even though I've got all the cookies. It's actually the migrant that's stolen all your cookies. 
Here's another example of the problems. Let's just look at housing. This graph shows construction in the UK since 1949 up to 2017. And what you see since the era of Thatcher is that government housing has declined in production. It means that the value of your house has actually gone up if you've been lucky enough to own one, but it also means rent has increased but it has not kept up with wages. In the 1980s, the average person would be earning about 14,000 a year and house prices on average were about 40,000. So essentially it's almost double your earnings to buy a house. However, since the 1980s, house prices have gone up by tenfold, but your wages, two and a half times increase. That means house prices are now out of reach and all you're doing with your life, if you're on an average wage, is just surviving and paying the bills. If your wages are grown, with house prices, on average, you'd be earning 100k a year. But remember, it's not that complicated shit. It's that guy you don't know who wants to have your cookie. And I'm not pointing the finger you at are, any community Sorry, you are absolutely pointing the finger at immigrants. You can't deny that. I'm the pointing case. the finger at government policy, you which is flawed. You could definitely point the and finger way, at government policy. Tried, for, for, for example, on tax, yeah, ha, you Have you tried driving around the country lately? Yes. Have you tried getting a GP appointment? Yes. We, we literally have made, I think, a catastrophic mistake. Almost 20% of our NHS came from overseas. Yeah, and isn't that... Thank goodness. Isn't that awful? Racist, nasty piece of work. And then on top of that, remember this advert from Leave EU, the campaign that said that by voting Brexit that all the things Nigel complained about will be fixed and better. Isn't it interesting how he's now flipped that and he's gone, well, Brexit didn't solve it, now we need to get rid of the ECHR and we need to get rid of migrants. But there's more. In Nigel's contract with you, his promises of what he'd do if he got into power, he actually talks about cuts. So he wants to increase social care and the NHS, but he also wants to cut 90 billion in spending. This is insane. This is completely deranged thinking. Either you spend more and you then pay those social care workers more, or you don't. Why is Isn't that, that awful? awful that we're not actually encouraging people, young men and young women, to go into nursing and many other things? Medical schools have had Why? cap numbers. Why? Because you think that people medical who didn't schools, come from overseas would make medical better schools GPs? He wants to increase medical places, but he wants 90 billion in cuts. He's deranged. In fact, what I'd say is that what he's said is stupid. And if anyone listens and takes this on board, they're now dumber as a result. We have literally been capping the number of doctors we train and relying on taking doctors, often from very poor African countries, for example, where they're probably needed more than they are here. We okay. should be ashamed that's of ourselves. A, that's a completely different argument. No, I it want isn't. To, yes, it is, because then you're saying you're trying, you're actually doing the best for African countries which can't support their own health services. That's the, the, not your the argument. The fact we're taking sure. talent from poor countries, we should not be proud of. Actually, the vast majority are from the European Union, and you'll find that places like Greece, Italy, and Spain have had an excess of staff over that period of time when we were in the EU. And that meant that they were coming over to the UK to get some work experience. Nigel obviously is not going to mention that. And of course, his conspiracies continue. You would agree that the social care system in the last three or four years would have collapsed if it wasn't for social care workers coming from around the world Ed, to work in Britain. We keep making this argument year after year after year that we but it would have done. Cope, so what would you have cope. done instead for social care? Well, you know as well as I do that one of the massive problems we've got are the sheer number of people in Britain of working age that are not working. This is another myth of five million people being available to work while the vast majority of them are retired or they're care workers or they're lifelong ill or they're students. The remainder, which are a few hundred thousand, well, they are able to work and are actively seeking employment. And one of the problems is social care, as we all know, which is a job, by the way, I wouldn't want to do. Very difficult job to do. Anyone else shocked that Nigel doesn't want to look after the sick or the elderly? I'm not. Take note of how many times he's interrupted Susanna. By my count, it's double the amount he actually interrupts Ed Balls per minute. What can we learn from that? And while I leave you to digest that thought, let's go back to more of Nigel's conspiracies. ...have been criticised for being irresponsible mm. and dangerous. Um, and he accuses you of amplifying false information. When you suggested that, in a video, by the way, that police withheld <coughs> the truth about the person alleged to be behind this tragedy. Here's a reminder of what Nigel said. Was this guy being monitored by the security services? Some reports say he was, others less sure. The police say it's a non-terror incident. Just as they said the stabbing, 
of an Army Lieutenant Colonel in uniform on the streets of Kent the other day was a non-terror incident. I just wonder whether the truth is being withheld from us. I don't know the answer to that, but I think it is a fair and legitimate question. We're just asking questions. Has Nigel Farage gone down the rabbit hole too much? Maybe, maybe not. Has he taken drugs to come up with his conclusions? Probably not. Has he been kicked in the head by a horse? Who knows? I'm just asking questions. And let's not forget where he got his information from. This is the problem, isn't it? One of the reasons the Southport riots were as bad as they were is we weren't told the truth. There were stories online uh, from some very prominent uh, folks with big followings, Andrew Tate, etc. Not ITV or the BBC or Sky News. No, he got it from an alleged sex trafficker in Romania. Andrew Tate, and let the conspiracies continue. Mm. Now let's bear in mind there is a legal process going on. Mm. We don't want to compromise. We always hide behind that, don't we? we that, That's the rule of law yeah, in this no, no. country. Well, how interesting you say that. That because, we don't compromise well, someone's on. fair trial. So this is really interesting. And allow the families of those who have suffered to hear the truth. Yeah, and we hide behind this again and again and again. Why are you saying hide behind? I'll tell you why. But I'll tell you, you are I'll tell, fully I'll tell in support you why. of the rule of law. I'll tell you why. And you know what contempt almost, of court is. Almost unre... This is very interesting. OK. The... Please don't veer into no, contempt no, 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 of court. No, no, no. In, I'm going to tell you what Lord Carlyle... Your claim that we're hiding behind the rule of law. Lord Carlyle, Liberal Democrat peer, but a very senior legal man, along with Jonathan Hall KC, who is the government's terrorism czar, OK? So these are two very significant figures, mm -hmm. both publicly said three weeks ago that the government ought to have told people the truth that in general, governments hide behind this idea that there's a legal process going on, therefore we can't give the public... You can shake your head. This is... I'm absolutely shaking this my head is, because you this said... This is... Hang on. You repeated misinformation. Are you aware? Are you, are you aware? Was under surveillance. Are, are either of you, you aware? You asked whether the, the truth terrorism... is being withheld from us. Well, of course it's being withheld. Bear in mind that the person involved in this is 17 years of age and so has protection under the law. Nigel couldn't give a stuff. Look what happened in Nottingham. A triple murderer. Calacane, a triple murderer. It took us a year to find out that a senior doctor had said, do not let this man out or he will You're kill. conflating two the entirely separate the cases. The public deserves... That's not how the rule of law works. Do you know works. what? The public deserves to know the truth and both Lord Carlyle and... and the truth was and that the suspect was not under surveillance. The truth was you know that, that the suspect had... Do you know that? Well, you don't know no, that no. he was under surveillance. You just you raised think? this spurious and you, question. And why do you think? He has an obsession with the truth, even at the detrimental effects it can have in court cases. This is the problem, isn't it? One of the reasons the Southport riots were as bad as they were is we weren't told the truth. He's deliberately ignoring that the person involved was 17. He's doubling down and not taking responsibility for his actions and how he inflamed the situation by demanding truth in an appropriate time. And again, he has not once referenced the three kids that were killed and the others who were stabbed and attacked during that incident. It's all about Nigel. Why do you think the riots happened in the way that they did? Because as I've shown in this video, instead of talking about the real issues that have been causing all this social inequality in the UK, people like Nigel have been pointing the finger at migrants and far right activists have taken it a step further and wanting to use violence all because he's put the kindling on and someone else has sparked the flame. And this is no different to what's taking place in the 30s across the whole of Europe. They started blaming immigrants, which you can see in their books, suggesting that they and Jews were the ones that caused all the problems. And then Ed Balls came in and dropped some truth bombs. Um, was that this was a migrant who had committed this exactly. crime. So why, not, charge so, why not, so why not kill the rumours? Do you know what? No, but, you, but you fed what I, the rumours. You, you inflamed the rumours. I, I you, you on social media gave the impression no. that there was truth behind the idea that no. this was, in fact, a migrant who had done this, and it was untrue. I was saying, I was saying tell the truth, give the public information, no, and the problem knowledge, will die down. The thing, the thing is, Does he think he's the king or something? Does he think he has the right to tell and order government around? Who does he think he is? But on top of that, he's spreading rumours and whispers into the public's ears and projecting it as truth and doesn't seem to have any guilt or remorse in the part that he played. 
in stoking fears, anger and tension in communities. And the fact that is now you're a member of parliament. Do, do, do you know what? Responsibility now. You can't just behave like some Neither of you pundit. Knew. If you give Neither the impression to people Ed, that what's you, being hidden you is it's a migrant you can go who is committing on, these crimes, you, go on, you end up with riots in the streets as as and like. hotels being burned. You can go on as long as you like. Neither of you knew. I'm not sure how the presenters kept their cool because he was just talking over them as if he's the king. Until I just said it, that the terrorism czar had backed up my words 100%, did you? No, I didn't. Did I absolutely no, didn't. No, you didn't. Know it all, Nigel. He knows everything and no one else knows anything. These are some strong and concerning narcissistic traits coming through here, where no one else can know anything apart from Nigel. And note again how he's saying it to a woman. We know as broadcasters, you can't just put false yeah. information out into the public Ex knowing exactly. what happened. Exactly. You, you did. No, but that's exactly, exactly what you did. It was did. you doing it. Sharp as a marble, this one. He hasn't even twigged that he's actually attacked himself for spreading lies about the 17 year old who was born in Wales being an immigrant, but also using Andrew Tate as a media source. Nigel is living proof that even evolution can take a few steps backwards. And on that cheerful note, you can find my report in the description and comments. Once again, thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube supporters. You keep this channel going and growing. If you'd like to support the channel, click the link in the description. You can even buy me a coffee. Once again, thanks for listening. Bye for now.